All right, biggest NFL weekend of the year, right? Biggest NFL weekend of the year. Steelers and Titans in the AFC. Panthers and Giants in the NFC. And biggest matchup yet, Knobs v. Tools in fantasy football Super Bowls. That's right, clones. I know I don't have to tell you this because I'm one of five dudes in this country that doesn't play. The only reason I don't play is because I don't have enough time to play it as well as I want to play it, so I just don't. It's easier for me just not to do it than to have some of you dweebs roll me up and be able to stand over me and talk junk, so I just don't do it because I have to worry about two shows every single day. But I'm one of five cats in this country that doesn't play. Knobs v. Tools, fantasy football, Super Bowl, you know it. The last two teams standing in your leagues battle it out over the next three days. In other words, the two knobs who wasted, uh, spent the most time working their lineups, pounding the waiver wire, hanging around fantasy message boards, dating back to August, get a chance to prove that it was all worth it. That... Whatever relationships were ruined, your wife, your girlfriend, your friends, your coworkers, whatever you gave up to win, we're going to find out whether or not it's worth it. The price you paid, the sacrifices you made, the self-denial that you endured, the fact that you no longer have a girlfriend or a wife, your self-respect, your dignity, whatever you gave up in order to win, it's all coming right down to it, and we're going to find out whether or not it's worth it. And how about last night? I mean, let's face it. What I'm saying is the owners with the best teams are the owners with the worst real lives. Right? You're not smarter. You're not better. You put in more time. You have more time or you put in more time or both. Okay? So, again, the owners with the best teams are are the owners with the worst real lives. What I'm saying to you is, and I know you don't like this, see, you've been going under the false assumption that if you win your fantasy league, you know more about football and you're better at playing that game than anybody else, that you should be a GM, that you're just better. Like, you're walking around feeling good about yourself. Yeah, I got paid. I won. I'm better. I'm more competitive. I figured out a way to do it. No. If you win your fantasy league, you're a loser. Understand? Playing is one thing. I'm fine with playing. You're blowing off some steam. You're talking a little bit of junk. It's a way to follow it. It keeps it more interesting. Playing it is fine. Playing it is fine. If you play, you're not a loser. If you win, you're a loser. Because what that means is you do nothing but. Other more important things... Go by the wayside. Hey, Rome, I won 500 bucks. Screw you. Great. You spent five months killing yourself, putting off things that you should be doing to win that 500 bucks. How much more money could you have made if you spent that same time working on your career? Well, great. 500 bucks. I can't take that from you. Of course, if you do the math, you were getting paid about five cents an hour to make that 500 bucks. You'd make more money if you were in jail. You're going to need that 500 bucks after you get fired from work. Consider that severance. You could have made double that amount of money pounding out license plates in jail. Again, playing is fine. Winning your league makes you a loser. How about that game last night? Colts and Jags laden with fantasy implications between Peyton, Mojo, Reggie Wayne, Joseph Adai wearing streets. There were a handful of first and second rounders on the field last night. And while the Peyton Manning owners are talking all kinds of junk today, rearranging the talking Yoda statue and the retainer case on their bedside table to make room for their 2008 league championship trophy, the Mojo owners are spending the day cursing the name Montel Owens. Montel Owens. Why would you care about Montel Owens? Because he poached a goal line TD from your boy last night, and in so doing, 
pretty much ruined your year, if not your entire life. You're all geeked in the second quarter. The Jags were down on the goal line. Your number two running back is about to get you six points you have to have when all of a sudden, who trots onto the field but Montel Owens? And there's not even any Montel Owens owners celebrating that fact because nobody has him. A no-name who you didn't put in for on the waiver claim may have just ruined your entire season. And if you ruined your season, you ruined your life. That's why fantasy honk is hilarious. He couldn't care less that Jacksonville scored. That's got nothing to do with anything. It's totally irrelevant. It's about who scored. That's why you're watching a different football game than I am. And right now, dudes like Montel Owens are ruining people's lives. He just went Greg Camarillo on a lot of you. He's the dream killer. He's your dream killer. Take Jason Stewart and Alvin DeLauro. There's a couple of honks. They did the very manly thing, and they decided to join up and become co-owners of a fantasy team this year. Hey, you don't co-own a team unless you self-gloss. And Jay Stu and Alvin DeLauro self-glossed. They split the team. Talk about a man's game. They split a team. Not even man enough to have their own team. Yeah, I could see where neither one of you guys could handle that $20 entry fee. So not only do they split the team, but they both self-gloss. They gloss themselves Mav and Goose. Mav, DeLauro, and Goose Stewart. Way to go. Playing with the boys. And that, but then again, maybe it was Mav Stewart and Goose DeLauro. I really don't know. I really don't think it matters. I'll finish that thought in a minute. Remember, playing fantasy football is fine. Winning your league makes you a loser. Adrian Wilson, when we come back.